In this lesson, we're going to learn how to write hypothesis statements when we're given a specific problem statement. So similar to what we might see in a homework problem or a test or something of that nature. So there's a few things that I think we need to do beforehand to help us out because our goal is to write the null in the alternative hypothesis. So we have to know a little bit about uh, what things we can expect in the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So here are a few, a few key words that I want to kind of hone in on that will help us identify the alternative hypothesis. Um, the symbols that we typically use in the alternative hypothesis are the less than, the greater than, and the not equal to. So it's one of those three. That alternative hypothesis is a statement about strict inequality. So the, the terms that go along with those symbols respectively, for the less than symbol, we might see the word less than, fewer than, smaller than, below, and certainly not limited to those for the less than symbol. For the greater than symbol, we might see the term greater than, more than, bigger than, above. Those are typical terms that we see in, um, in, in a statement for a greater than symbol. And then the not equal to symbol includes terms like not equal to, different than, and other than. So like I said just a little while ago, these are symbols that we see in H sub A, our alternative hypothesis. So I'll just label that above here. We're talking about H sub A right here. And those are the three symbols that we'll use in there. And we'll get to H sub zero in just a minute and what those symbols are for H sub zero. But if we look at this problem statement, for example, one, it says an advertising company claims that more than 83% of people read the advertisement on billboards. So I want to know what the correct null and alternative hypothesis for this claim is but we have to be able to identify some of the key information. So first off, when we look in there, there's some key terms that I just talked about a moment ago. We have this term more than in the statement right there. And then we have this value of 83%, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But the more than is one of those symbols that we talked about in the alternative hypothesis. If you look through our list of symbols, we can see we're talking about that word right there. So that means we're gonna be talking about the greater than symbol and using that. So let's write our null and alternative hypothesis, at least parts of the statements for right now. So we have H sub zero, and we're talking about the population proportion P, and we have H sub A. And again, we're talking about the population proportion P. So I'm gonna write a, a P there. Note, note uh, just so you recall, some textbooks will use the symbol pi for the population proportion. I use the, uh, the uh, symbol P for the population proportion. And um, I said just a little while ago that H sub A can only have these three symbols in it, the less than, the greater than, or the not equal to. So we're gonna be talking about P being greater than. That's the statement that's given in this problem statement right there. The more than implies the greater than symbol. So that's what I'm gonna use in H sub A. This 83%, that's the hypothesized value for the population proportion. Some texts will, will label this as P sub zero and they'll say that this is 0 0.83. It's generally expressed as a decimal value. Now, when I write it in the statement, I'm not gonna write P sub zero down here. I'm gonna write the actual value down here. So this is saying that P is greater than 0 0.83 right there. And when we talk about the null hypothesis, that's also going to include that 0 0.83 right here as well but we have to identify what symbol we're gonna use in there. Now for intro stats, at least in the beginning, I teach using what's called the complement pair to the symbols. So when we talk about H sub zero, there are complements to each of those symbols in H sub A. So right here, this is our H sub zero right there. So the complement to the less than symbol is the greater than or equal to symbol. The complement to the greater than symbol is the less than or equal to symbol. And the complement to the not equal to symbol is going to be the equal to symbol. So those are the respective complement pairs for H sub zero and H sub A. Now, like I said, I use the greater than symbol in H sub A. So that means H sub zero has to contain this less than or equal to symbol right there. And if you think about it, it'll make sense. If we were to draw this proportion on a number line, remember the proportion can only take on values from zero to one. And so H sub zero is saying, we're looking at all the values of 0.83 and below, so all the way down to zero. And then H sub A is looking at all the values above 0.83. So this would be point maybe 
0.0001 or something like that, all the way up to, to 1. So this is taking on the entire range of values that the proportion can take on by making those two statements. Now, one thing that I do want to point out, and I'll cover this probably a little bit later, but the, the null hypothesis, um, even if we have a less than or a greater than symbol, technically we can have an equal to symbol in those places right there. And there are certain times when we would want to use an equal to symbol, but those wouldn't be the complement pairs right there, right? So those are other ways that we can do that. We can use equal to an H sub zero, or we can use the complement pairs to that. So hopefully that's making sense so far. Let's look at our other example and take a look at that. I'll change color so we can see this um, in a different color over here. But in this case, it says a company that manufactures craft beads indicates that tw uh, that 25 percent of the beads in their bead buckets are blue. You would like to determine if the actual proportion of blue beads in the buckets is uh, different than 25 percent on average. So there's one of those key words that we are looking for. All right. So we can see that we have the different than right there and we have the different than right there. So that's implying that we're talking about the not equal to sign when we see that. And that's 25%. So that 25% is our value of P sub zero. So if we're gonna talk about P sub zero, that's going to be 0 0.25. And now we can start thinking about our null and our alternative hypothesis. So we have H sub zero. We know that's going to be a statement about our population proportion P and it's gonna deal with the value of 0 0.25. And then H sub A is also going to be a statement about our population proportion. And it's gonna deal with the specific value of 0 0.25. And then we just have to figure out the symbols that go in there. Since H sub A always has to be a strict statement of strict inequality, that different than implies not equal to, that has to go in H sub A. Now the complement pair and the only um, symbol that works for h sub 0 when we have the not equal to symbol there is the equal to symbol for h sub 0. So either the value is 25 in terms of 25% of the uh, beads being blue or it's something other than 25. It could be smaller than that value or larger than that value. So hopefully this video shows you how to identify hypothesis statements from a problem statement and write those hypothesis statements. In future videos, I'll talk about how to use the hypothesis statement to calculate your p-value and, and other things related to this.